My name is Oliver Knapp and I'm an engineer here at Somerford. Today, we're going to talk about the application and utilization of Infrastructure as Code, or IAC, in terms of security within Lacework. Somerford is a premier partner with Lacework, having worked with them delivering their state-of-the-art cybersecurity solution to a host of satisfied customers. As such, we have specialist knowledge and experience when it comes to provisioning, maintaining and gaining value from the Lacework platform. Our services to this end include the setting up and delivery of Lacework's bespoke proof of value, provided free of charge by Summerford, the adoption of full deployments of the Lacework platform, and support for any needs you may have within Lacework. In this video, we'll explore how through its bespoke systems, Lacework offers an Inico security suite, enabling you to catch problems before they materialize into an active threat. This will include a demo utilizing the Lacework partner environment, allowing you to see the IAC security in action. So, let's explore in more detail the idea of IAC security and what it really means. When looking at the wide variety of cyber threats and methods to remediate these threats, there is one link which can be drawn between them all. That being, the earlier you handle the threat, the better, from reducing costs dramatically to preventing unwanted access and data loss in its entirety. Stopping attacks before they occur is incredibly important, and with misconfigures in code being the leading root cause of data breaches, you can see how an early capture of threats is very important to cybersecurity. As such, any mechanism which allows for the identification and handling of vulnerabilities and attack vectors before any code is even published holds extreme value. Enter Lacework's solution, its IAC or pipeline scanning capabilities. Through integrating its IAC bot directly into your pipeline, be that GitHub, GitLab or any other of your CI/CD pipelines, Lacework passes your code through a static analysis pipeline as well as plan and policy checks to ensure security, compliance and policy implementation allowing you to have confidence in your code. The technology, as well as more of the theory, will be discussed more in the coming slides. Before we jump into a demo, I'd just like to go over the main points of interest, if you will, within IAC scanning lace work, as seen as the two points on the screen. The first point we encounter here is the idea that Lacework will directly integrate into your code repositories. First, you select your Git provider or directly select your CI/CD pipeline. This is all done through the Lacework GUI. From here, Lacework allows you to integrate the IAC bot straight into your selected repository. It's quick and easy, and allows your code to be scanned straight away. There's also this term shift left, and which is a term that's thrown around in the industry, although it doesn't really mean anything without context. However, it is a powerful concept. One, which Lacework in its very essence is built on. That is, it rep represents the idea of stopping threats before they can be exploited. This can be seen nowhere better in practice than in the integration of IAC security. The meaning of the phrase itself is essentially to pick up your security and move it left in your pipeline, as in tackling your security as a much earlier stage and integrating security from development time onwards. It's a powerful technique and one which is utilized in full effect within Laceworks IAC scanning. Now we understand the key concepts of Laceworks pipeline scanning. Let's have a brief overview of the key features which set it aside. The Lacework platform offers a multitude of ways to interact with your code repositories. One of note is the ability to auto-resolve issues that Lacework finds in your code, that is, fix security issues that is found through just a click of a button. This will be shown in the demo portion of this video. If there is no automatic resolution available, there will be guides and further information on potential manual resolutions provided to you within the Lacework GUI. Alongside the resolution methods offered, Lacework also includes the ability to set custom policies on your code for developers to adhere to. These will then be reported on as if they were faults in your code. Alongside this, exceptions can also be set on your code to ignore certain faults. For instance, if you were to be creating infrastructure that needs certain port ports to be open, but regularly this would be a security risk, you can set an exception for any events flagged related to that so they don't flag in your environment as a critical error within your code. All of these features in theory are aimed to provide a complete and smooth development experience, not getting in the way of your code developers, rather working alongside them so that the code they are pushing out is as secure as possible. Now that we have covered the main points, let's explore and put some context to them through a demonstration of the Lacework IAC scanning user interface alongside the dashboard and reports it presents. Here we find ourselves on the WebGUI for the Lacework demo environment. When you first go into Lacework, on your deployment, you'll be greeted by a similar Lacework dashboard to this. This Lacework dashboard gives an overview of your entire Lacework deployment, including interest information, 
and a nice visual representation of trends and the main parts of lace work. From here, we'll use the navigation tabs on the left, when we want to look at IAC security that is, to go into infrastructure, IAC. You can also use this navigation feature on the left to access any other part of your lacework deployment. So we'll click into IAC now. Here, we are immediately greeted by a dashboard, which gives an overview of all the code repositories you have integrated, as well as a brief overview of the violations within them. If you have watched any of our previous Lacework content, you may notice the consistent theming and layout of the Lacework interface across its many facets. This, in my opinion, is a great boon, which makes Lacework incredibly user-friendly and a tool which is easy to pick up and immediately draw value from, especially if you've used it before. However, if you have not used Lacework before, I feel like it is quite user-friendly and it's a nice thing to look at, especially when compared to its competitors. Before we go into a code repository, I would first like to demonstrate how you would integrate your own repository, at least at a surface level, just to give a feeling for the process. As this is the demo environment, I'm not able to integrate my own code repositories into Lacework, but I can give an overview of how you would go about it. So, after navigating to the IEC dashboard as already shown, you then click the Add Integration button in the top right of the screen, like so. This would bring you to the Integrate Code Scanning menu, this can also be accessed by navigating to this tab in the Settings tab. Once here, you choose the option you wish to integrate, be that a pipeline or a Git provider. We can see that GitHub, GitLab and Bitbucket are available as Git providers, and also the ability to directly integrate your CICD pipeline is also available. On top of this, if you wish to locally scan code on your workstation as soon as it is written, this is also an option within Lacework. We will select GitHub for the purposes of this demo, so I click GitHub and click Start Integration. By following the link in the bottom right, you'll be taken to your Git repository, and then the bot may be installed. However, I won't be doing this in this demonstration, as this is the demo environment. Back on the IAC dashboard, we will navigate to the Vote App repository, like so. When clicking into a repository, we will be greeted by an overview dashboard, which gives general information on the security health of the code, including the pass rate of all the code in the repository, as seen here, how this relates to compliance and account of the violations by severity. Using the search tools at the top of the screen, we can filter for the information we want to see. There is also the view branches button, which will show all previous scans of the repository, as well as the run new scan button, which allows us to scan the code ad hoc. As we can see, we can adjust the severity of what the alerts we are looking at are, and also if they contain any certain keywords that we wish to have a look at. All of these filters may be reset just to get a brief overview at any point during your investigations. Scrolling down, we can see all of our violations in our code, as well as there where there have been violations but they have been ignored by an exception, as are seen under this tab, for instance, the use of plain HTTP. Under all violations, we can see it is sorted by severity. This can be changed using the filtering options. Clicking on the violation brings it up in much more detail. You simply click here, and then click here, and it would also bring it up in your code also. Here, a new tab opens to the right when we click into a violation, which gives us a summary of it and more information such as the guidelines for it and maybe potential resolutions. Under the titles in this newly opened tab we can garner more information on the violation including a description and also the rationale behind why it is a security risk. We can also find the option to make this violation an exception. We'd simply, if you wanted to put a reason, add a reason and click add exception. Then instead of all violations it would appear inside the exceptions tab. Using the filters, we can then look for violations, which can be auto-resolved, where you would then click the violation and click to resolve the issue. In order to look for this, we will click on auto-fix and click available and show results. Here, we have some policies and violations which are fixable automatically. You would hover over where you can see the violation and click resolve. If I were to do it, I click here, click resolution and fix issue. Lacework would then generate the fix that it believes would solve the issue. 
The final feature I wish to demo for you is the aforementioned policies. These can be found by navigating to the policies tab at the top of the screen. Here we can see all of the custom policies which have been configured as well as the ability to manage them. Due to the nature of the demo environment I am unable to demonstrate the configuring of policies. However, it is done through navigating to the policies tab on the left of the screen and clicking configure policies. As seen here, however, due to the demo environment, it is greyed out. You would then be walked through the configuration of your policy. This concludes the demo portion of this video. So, to wrap up what we have covered today, Lacework offers a competent and versatile IAC or pipeline scanning tool, which aids you in shifting left and ultimately saving time and money. Through discussion, we approached the idea of preventing threats before they become an issue and the general trend of shift left. We also covered how Lacework uses its IAC bot to integrate within your code repositories. We covered the key features of the Lacework IAC scanning tool, including a demonstration using the Lacework demo environment of how you would go around utilizing it and the actual information it provides. This included showing off the bespoke features, such as the auto resolve utility and the ability to set custom policies all coming together to provide your developers with a seamless and helpful experience. Through this time we have spent, I do hope you learned a little something about shift left security and how you might use Lacework to facilitate it, saving you both time and money. If you have any questions or want to learn more about Lacework, then please get in touch with us at info at summerfordassociates.com and check out our other videos on the features of Lacework. Thank you for watching and goodbye.